Question one, when issuing a traffic citation, what is the primary purpose of documenting the violation details comprehensively? A, to ensure that the citation can be contested in court. B, to provide a clear record for future reference and potential legal proceedings. C, to make the citation process more efficient for the enforcement agent. D, to simplify the issuance process by avoiding detailed descriptions. Correct answer. B, to provide a clear record for future reference and potential legal proceedings. Explanation. The primary purpose of documenting violation details comprehensively is to provide a clear and accurate record for future reference and potential legal proceedings. This detailed documentation ensures that there is sufficient evidence to support the citation if contested in court and helps in maintaining the integrity of the enforcement process while ensuring the citation can be contested a, and making the process efficient. C. Are important. The main focus is on creating a reliable record. Simplifying the process by avoiding detailed descriptions. D. Could undermine the effectiveness of the citation. Question 2. Officer Smith is on duty and notices a vehicle parked in a clearly marked no parking zone. The vehicle owner is present but argues that they will only be a few minutes and that the restriction is not clearly visible. How should Officer Smith handle this situation? A. Issue the citation immediately without discussing the matter with the vehicle owner. B. Engage in a detailed discussion with the vehicle owner and only issue the citation if they refuse to move the vehicle. C. Take a photograph of the vehicle and parking restriction, then issue the citation while explaining the violation to the vehicle owner. D. Allow the vehicle owner to remain parked and issue a verbal warning instead of a citation. Correct answer. C. Take a photograph of the vehicle and parking restriction, then issue the citation while explaining the violation to the vehicle owner. Explanation. In this situation, Officer Smith should take a photograph of the vehicle in the no parking zone to document the violation and any potential issues with visibility. Issuing the citation while explaining the violation to the vehicle owner ensures that the enforcement action is fair and transparent. This approach provides evidence for the citation and allows the vehicle owner to understand the reason for the enforcement action. Issuing the citation immediately without discussion may or allowing the vehicle to remain parked with just the warning D does not address the need for evidence and clear communication. Engaging in a lengthy discussion B might delay the enforcement action and is not necessary if the violation is clear. Question 3. Which of the following factors is most critical in designing roadways to reduce the risk of accidents? A. Maximising the number of lanes to accommodate more traffic. B. Implementing clear and consistent signage and markings. C. Increasing the speed limits to improve traffic flow. D. Reducing the frequency of traffic signals to minimise stops. Correct answer, A. Using a modular design approach to ensure that different components of the software can be developed and updated independently. Explanation. A modular design approach, option A, is crucial for maintaining flexibility and scalability in software development. It allows different components to be developed, tested and updated independently, promoting better maintainability and easier integration of new features. Prioritizing aesthetic design, option B, and rapid development. Option C are important but secondary to robust coding practices. A one-size-fits-all approach, option D, may not address specific needs and could compromise code quality and functionality. Question 4. A driver is pulled over for speeding in a residential area with a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour. The driver claims they were driving at 30 miles per hour due to a malfunctioning speedometer and requests leniency, what should the traffic enforcement agent's response be based on standard procedures? A. Issue the citation as usual as the speed limit violation is clear regardless of the speedometer issue. B. Take note of the driver's claim and issue a warning instead of a citation considering the malfunctioning speedometer. C. Verify the driver's speedometer claim by checking their vehicle's records before deciding on the citation. D. Allow the driver to continue without any citation or warning as the malfunctioning speedometer could be a valid excuse. Correct answer. A. Issue the citation as usual as the speed limit violation is clear regardless of the speedometer issue. Explanation. 
the traffic enforcement agent should issue the citation as usual because the speed limit violation is clear and objective. The driver's claim about a malfunctioning speedometer does not change the fact that they were exceeding the posted speed limit while the agent may take the claim into account for possible future proceedings or appeals. The standard procedure is to issue the citation based on observed violations. Issuing a warning, B, or not issuing a citation at all, D, does not address the infraction that has occurred and verifying the speedometer claim, C, is unnecessary when the violation is straightforward. Question 5. Which of the following strategies is most effective for handling a high traffic area prone to frequent violations and accidents? A. Increasing the frequency of traffic signals to manage flow and reduce violations. B. Implementing automated speed enforcement systems and visible signage to deter violations. C. Reducing the speed limits to decrease traffic flow and minimize accidents. D. Installing additional lanes to alleviate congestion and reduce the likelihood of accidents. Correct answer. B. Implementing automated speed enforcement systems and visible signage to deter violations. Explanation. Implementing automated speed enforcement systems and visible signage is the most effective strategy for managing high traffic areas prone to frequent violations and accidents. Automated systems, such as speed cameras, provide consistent enforcement and deter speeding, while clear signage informs drivers of speed limits and potential penalties. Increasing traffic signals a, might help with flow but can also lead to more stops and potential accidents. Reducing speed limits c could help but it might not address the root cause of violations. But adding lanes d might alleviate congestion but does not necessarily address the frequency of violations. Question 6. In a scenario where a traffic enforcement agent must manage a major accident involving multiple vehicles, what is the primary focus when securing the accident scene? A. Ensure that all involved drivers are immediately given traffic citations to deter future violations. B. Collect detailed information from witnesses and involved parties without securing the scene first. C. Establish a perimeter to prevent unauthorized access and gather evidence to support an accurate report. D. Direct traffic around the scene and focus solely on clearing the roadway as quickly as possible. Correct answer. C. Establish a perimeter to prevent unauthorized access and gather evidence to support an accurate report. Explanation. The primary focus when managing a major accident is to establish a perimeter to prevent unauthorized access and ensure that evidence is preserved for an accurate report. Securing the scene is crucial for collecting evidence such as vehicle positions and damage which will be necessary for accident reconstruction and legal purposes. Issuing citations a, is not the immediate priority in such a situation. Collecting information from witnesses b, is important but securing the scene must come first to prevent tampering with evidence. Clearing the roadway d is important but should not compromise the integrity of the evidence and accident management. Question 7. A traffic enforcement agent observes a vehicle running a red light at an intersection where the traffic signal is clearly functioning. The driver explains that they were running late and did not see the signal change. What should the agent do in response to this situation? A. Ignore the violation due to the driver's explanation and provide a warning instead of a citation. B. Issue a citation as the violation is clear but note the driver's explanation in the report for context. C. Conduct a field test to determine if the traffic signal was functioning properly at the time of the violation. D. Request that the driver provide proof of their late schedule and based on that decide whether to issue a citation. Correct answer. B. Issue a citation as the violation is clear but know the driver's explanation in the report for context. Explanation. The traffic enforcement agent should issue a citation as the violation running a red light is clear and evident regardless of the driver's explanation. However, it is also important to document the driver's explanation in the report for context. This information may be relevant if the case is contested or if the court needs to consider any mitigating circumstances. Ignoring the violation is not appropriate as it undermines enforcement. 
conducting a field test C is unnecessary since the signal's functionality is not in question based on the observation. Requesting proof of the driver's schedule D is not relevant to the citation decision and does not align with standard enforcement procedures. Question 8. What is the primary benefit of using radar guns and other speed detection equipment in traffic enforcement? A. To improve the accuracy of speed limit signage on roadways. B. To provide evidence for issuing citations and enforcing speed limits effectively. C. To enable traffic enforcement agents to interact more directly with drivers during traffic stops. D. To increase the number of traffic citations issued and thus enhance enforcement efficiency. Correct answer. B to provide evidence for issuing citations and enforcing speed limits effectively. Explanation. The primary benefit of using radar guns and other speed detection equipment is to provide evidence for issuing citations and enforcing speed limits effectively. These devices accurately measure vehicle speed and support the enforcement process by documenting violations with precise data. Improving the accuracy of signage day is not the direct benefit of using speed detection equipment. Direct interaction with drivers C is not the main function of these devices and while increasing the number of citations D might be an outcome the primary goal is to ensure effective enforcement based on accurate speed measurements. Question 9. In evaluating the effectiveness of a traffic enforcement strategy aimed at reducing speeding in a specific area, which method provides the most actionable data? A. Comparing the number of traffic citations issued before and after implementing the strategy. B. Analyzing accident reports to see if the number of speed-related accidents has decreased. C. Conducting public surveys to assess drivers' perception of traffic enforcement in the area. D. Observing traffic patterns and speeds using automated speed enforcement systems over a period. Correct answer. D. Observing traffic patterns and speeds using automated speed enforcement systems over a period. Explanation. Observing traffic patterns and speeds using automated speed enforcement systems over a period provides the most actionable data for evaluating the effectiveness of a traffic enforcement strategy. This method offers direct measurements of vehicle speeds and traffic flow, allowing for an accurate assessment of whether the strategy is working. Comparing citation numbers A and analyzing accident reports B can provide useful information, but they may not directly reflect changes in traffic behavior. Public surveys C offer subjective feedback but do not provide objective data on traffic patterns and speeds. Automated systems give concrete evidence of the strategy's impact on driving behaviors. Question 10. An enforcement agent is assigned to monitor a high traffic intersection known for frequent accidents. The agent notices that accidents often occur during specific weather conditions. What is the most effective way to address this issue? A. Increase the frequency of traffic stops and citations during these weather conditions. B. Coordinate with local authorities to improve road conditions and signage for better visibility during adverse weather. C. Reduce the speed limit temporarily during these weather conditions without changing any other enforcement strategies. D. Focus on issuing warnings to drivers who violate traffic rules during adverse weather conditions. Correct answer. B. Coordinate with local authorities to improve road conditions and signage for better visibility during adverse weather. Explanation. The most effective way to address accidents that occur during specific weather conditions is to coordinate with local authorities to improve road conditions and signage for better visibility. This approach addresses the root causes of accidents by enhancing road safety measures and adapting infrastructure to adverse weather conditions. Increasing traffic stops and citations A or reducing the speed limit temporarily C might not be as effective if the underlying issue of poor road conditions is not addressed. Issuing warnings D does not resolve the broader problem of unsafe road conditions during adverse weather. Question 11. During a traffic stop, the driver presents a driver's license that appears to be expired. However, the driver claims to have recently renewed it online and has not yet received the updated license. 
what should the traffic enforcement agent do? They'd accept the driver's claim and issue a warning, allowing the driver to continue without a citation. B, verify the driver's claim by checking with the DMV or relevant authority before deciding on the citation. C, issue a citation for driving with an expired license and advise the driver to resolve the renewal issue with the DMV. D, allow the driver to continue without a citation and request that they provide proof of renewal later. Correct answer. C. Issue a citation for driving with an expired license and advise the driver to resolve the renewal issue with the DMV explanation. The traffic enforcement agent should issue a citation for driving with an expired license because the driver is operating a vehicle with an outdated document, regardless of their claim about recent renewal. The agent should advise the driver to resolve the issue with the DMV, which is the proper course of action for dealing with an expired license. Verifying the claim B may not be practical during a traffic stop and does not negate the requirement for a valid license. Accepting the claim without action the or allowing the driver to continue with a promise of future proof D does not address the immediate violation. Question 12. What is the key advantage of using body cameras for traffic enforcement agents during traffic stops? A. To provide real-time feedback to drivers about their behaviour during the stop. B. To ensure accurate and unbiased documentation of interactions and incidents during traffic stops. C. To reduce the amount of written documentation needed by capturing video evidence. D. To allow agents to monitor traffic conditions remotely and adjust enforcement strategies. Question 12. What is the key advantage of using body cameras for traffic enforcement agents during traffic stops? A. To provide real-time feedback to drivers about their behaviour during the stop. B. To ensure accurate and unbiased documentation of interactions and incidents during traffic stops. C. To reduce the amount of written documentation needed by capturing video evidence. D. To allow agents to monitor traffic conditions remotely and adjust enforcement strategies. Question 13. A traffic enforcement agent observes a vehicle with tinted windows that are darker than the legal limit according to state regulations. The driver argues that the tint is factory installed and should be exempt from regulation. What should the agent's course of action be? A. Ignore the tint violation if it is factory installed and proceed with a verbal warning. B. Issue a citation for the tint violation and provide the driver with information on how to appeal the citation if necessary. C. Allow the driver to proceed and suggest they have the tint removed to comply with regulations in the future. D. Verify the vehicle's factory tint specifications with the manufacturer before issuing any citation. Correct answer. B. Issue a citation for the tint violation and provide the driver with information on how to appeal the citation if necessary. Explanation. The traffic enforcement agent should issue a citation for the tint violation if it exceeds the legal limit, regardless of whether the tint is factory installed or not. The agent should also provide the driver with information on how to appeal the citation if they believe there are valid grounds for exemption. The legality of the tint is determined by state regulations and factory installed tints must still comply with those laws. Ignoring the violation A or allowing the driver to proceed with a suggestion C does not address the regulation breach. Verifying tint specifications with the manufacturer D is not necessary when the violation is clear and documented. Question 14. In which of the following scenarios is it most appropriate for a traffic enforcement agent to utilize a body camera? A. During a routine vehicle inspection where no interactions with the driver are expected. B. When conducting a traffic stop involving a vehicle suspected of having illegal modifications or expired documentation. C. While issuing a parking ticket for a vehicle parked in a restricted zone. D. When reviewing traffic patterns and accident data for planning enforcement strategies. Correct answer. B. When conducting a traffic stop involving a vehicle suspected of having illegal modifications or expired documentation. Explanation. Utilizing a body camera during a traffic stop involving a vehicle suspected of having illegal modifications or expired documentation is most appropriate.
Body cameras help document the interactions between the enforcement agent and the driver, providing evidence of any violations and the handling of the stop. This ensures transparency and can be valuable in legal or dispute situations. Using a body camera during routine inspections a, or when issuing parking tickets, C may not be necessary unless interactions are expected to be contentious or require documentation. Reviewing traffic patterns and accident data D does not involve direct enforcement interactions that would benefit from body camera footage. Question 15. A traffic enforcement agent needs to determine the best method for addressing a recurring issue of illegal parking in a commercial area. Which approach should be prioritized? A. Increasing the number of on-street parking spaces to alleviate congestion. B. Implementing a system of rotating enforcement officers to cover the area more frequently. C. Installing clear and visible no parking signs and regularly monitoring compliance. D. Offering community education programs about parking regulations to raise awareness. Correct answer. C. Installing clear and visible no parking signs and regularly monitoring compliance. Explanation. Installing clear and visible no parking signs and regularly monitoring compliance should be prioritized to address recurring illegal parking issues. Proper signage ensures that drivers are aware of parking restrictions and regular monitoring enforces these restrictions effectively. Increasing parking spaces they might not address the enforcement issue and could worsen the problem by attracting more vehicles. A rotating enforcement officers B may not be as effective as a consistent presence combined with clear signage. Community education programs D can be helpful but is secondary to having clear signage and regular enforcement to directly address the parking violations. Question 16. During a traffic stop, a driver claims they were speeding due to a medical emergency. What is the most appropriate action for the traffic enforcement agent to take? A. Accept the driver's explanation and issue a warning without a citation, as medical emergencies are exempt from traffic laws. B. Issue a citation for speeding but include the driver's explanation in the report for consideration by the court. C. Verify the medical emergency by contacting emergency services before deciding on the citation. D. Allow the driver to proceed without any citation and suggest they seek medical documentation to prove their claim. Correct answer. B. Issue a citation for speeding but include the driver's explanation in the report for consideration by the court. Explanation. The most appropriate action is to issue a citation for speeding as the infraction occurred regardless of the driver's explanation. However, it is important to document the driver's explanation in the report, which may be considered by the court if the driver chooses to contest the citation. Traffic laws are enforced regardless of personal circumstances, but the explanation can be part of the judicial process. Verifying the emergency, C or accepting the explanation without issuing a citation they does not align with standard enforcement procedures procedures and suggesting the driver seek documentation D does not address the immediate violation. Question 17. A traffic enforcement agent notices that a specific intersection is prone to frequent accidents due to poor visibility at night. What is the most effective measure to improve safety at this location? A. Increase the number of traffic enforcement patrols at the intersection during night hours. B. Install additional street lighting to enhance visibility and reduce accidents. C. Lower the speed limit at the intersection to minimize the impact of accidents. D. Conduct periodic traffic studies to analyze the accident patterns and develop future improvement plans. Correct answer. B. Install additional street lighting to enhance visibility and reduce accidents. Explanation. Installing additional street lighting is the most effective measure to improve safety at an intersection prone to accidents due to poor visibility. Enhanced lighting improves driver visibility and can significantly reduce the likelihood of accidents occurring in low light conditions. Increasing enforcement patrols a, or lowering the speed limit. C. Might not address the root cause of poor visibility. Conducting periodic traffic studies. D. Is valuable for long-term planning but does not immediately address the visibility issue impacting current safety. Question 18. An enforcement agent is reviewing data from a new automated traffic enforcement system. The system shows a high number of violations at a particular location. 
what is the most appropriate next step to address this issue? A. Increase the number of automated enforcement cameras at the location to capture more violations. B. Review and analyse the data to identify patterns and causes, then make targeted improvements based on the findings. C. Focus on issuing higher fines for violations recorded by the system to deter further offences. D. Recommend additional training for enforcement agents to better understand the data from the system. Correct answer. B. Policy formulation. Explanation. The policy formulation stage is focused on analysing and determining the potential impacts of a proposed policy before it is implemented. This stage involves developing policy options, assessing their feasibility and predicting their impacts to make informed decisions. Agenda setting A involves identifying and prioritising issues. Policy implementation C deals with executing the policy and policy evaluation. D assesses the outcomes after implementation. Formulation is the critical stage for evaluating potential impacts and preparing for successful policy execution. Question 19. A traffic enforcement agent is responding to a complaint about a driver who is consistently using a cell phone while driving. What approach should the agent take to address this issue? A. Conduct a traffic stop to issue a citation for the use of a cell phone while driving, based on the complaint. B. Increase general patrols in the area to deter cell phone use without targeting any specific driver. C. Request that the complainant gather evidence and report it to the enforcement agency for further action. D. Focus on educating drivers in the area about the dangers of cell phone use while driving through public outreach programs. Correct answer A. Conduct a traffic stop to issue a citation for the use of a cell phone while driving. Based on the complaint explanation, the most appropriate action is to conduct a traffic stop if the agent observes or has evidence of the driver using a cell phone while driving. Issuing a citation is necessary to enforce the law against distracted driving, which is a serious safety concern. Increasing patrols B and focusing on general deterrence may not address the specific complaint effectively. Requesting evidence from the complainant. C. May not be practical or timely. Public education D. Is valuable but does not directly address the immediate violation. Question 20. During a traffic enforcement shift, an agent observes that the number of parking violations has increased significantly in a residential area. What is the most effective strategy to address this problem? A. Increase the frequency of issuing parking tickets in the area to deter violations. B. Implement a community outreach program to inform residents about parking regulations. C. Coordinate with local authorities to review and possibly adjust parking regulations and enforcement practices. D. Reduce the number of enforcement officers assigned to the area to focus on other high priority areas. Correct answer. C. Coordinate with local authorities to review and possibly adjust parking regulations and enforcement practices. Explanation. Coordinating with local authorities to review and adjust parking regulations and enforcement practices is the most effective strategy. This approach allows for a comprehensive review of the parking issues and the implementation of appropriate changes to regulations or enforcement methods. Simply increasing ticket issuance may not resolve the underlying issues causing the increase in violations. Community outreach B can be part of the solution but should be combined with regulatory review. Reducing enforcement officers D is counterproductive and does not address the problem. Question 21. An enforcement agent is tasked with analysing traffic data to identify trends and improve enforcement strategies. Which method is most effective for identifying high-risk areas where enforcement should be focused? A. Reviewing historical traffic accident reports and identifying locations with a high frequency of accidents. B. Monitoring traffic flow and vehicle counts to determine areas with the highest volume of traffic. C. Conducting surveys of local drivers to gather their perceptions of traffic enforcement needs. D. Evaluating the number of citations issued over a set period to determine areas with the most frequent violations. Correct answer. A. Reviewing historical traffic accident reports and identifying locations with a high frequency of accidents. Explanation. Reviewing historical traffic accident reports is the most effective method for identifying high-risk areas where enforcement should be focused. Areas 
with a high frequency of accidents indicate significant safety concerns that may benefit from targeted enforcement and preventive measures. Monitoring traffic flow and vehicle counts B provides useful information but does not directly indicate high risk areas. Driver surveys C offer subjective insights while evaluating citations issued D may not fully capture areas where accidents are occurring despite fewer citations. Question 22. A traffic enforcement agent is reviewing a series of incidents where vehicles were observed running red lights at a busy intersection. What is the most effective measure to improve compliance and safety at this location? A. Install additional red light cameras to capture and enforce violations more effectively. B. Increase the frequency of manual traffic stops and citations at the intersection during peak hours. C. Collaborate with city planners to redesign the intersection to improve traffic flow and signal visibility. D. Conduct, a public awareness campaign about the dangers of running red lights in that specific area. Correct answer. C. Collaborate with city planners to redesign the intersection to improve traffic flow and signal visibility. Explanation. Collaborating with city planners to redesign the intersection is the most effective long-term measure to improve compliance and safety. This approach addresses potential structural or design issues that contribute to the problem such as poor signal visibility or traffic flow problems. Installing more red light cameras A or increasing manual traffic stops B may temporarily address the issue but do not resolve underlying problems. Conducting a public awareness campaign, D, is helpful but might not have as significant an impact as physical changes to the intersection. Question 23. An enforcement agent is dealing with a situation where a vehicle is parked in a space designated for the disabled but the driver claims to have a valid disability parking permit that is not visible. What is the proper course of action? They issue a parking ticket and instruct the driver to display their permit more clearly in the future. B. Check the validity of the disability parking permit with the issuing authority before deciding on the citation. C. Issue a warning to the driver allowing them to move the vehicle and display the permit properly, D verify the permit with the driver and if valid avoid issuing a citation but recommend they ensure it is always visible. Correct answer, D verify the permit with the driver and if valid avoid issuing a citation but recommend they ensure it is always visible explanation. The proper course of action is to verify the disability parking permit with the driver if the permit is valid. The citation should not be issued, but the driver should be advised to ensure that the permit is always displayed properly. This approach maintains compliance with regulations while addressing the visibility issue. Issuing a ticket day without verification is unjust if the permit is valid. Checking the permit validity with the issuing authority B is unnecessary when the driver has the permit and issuing a warning C does not address the need for proper permit display. Question 24. During a traffic enforcement shift, an agent notices an increase in illegal U-turns at a particular location where U-turns are prohibited. What is the most appropriate response to address this issue? A. Increase the number of traffic tickets issued for illegal U-turns at the location. B. Install additional signage to reinforce the prohibition of U-turns and enhance driver awareness. C. Request additional patrols in the area to catch and ticket offenders more effectively. D. Conduct. A survey to understand why drivers are making illegal U-turns and address their concerns. Correct answer. B. Install additional signage to reinforce the prohibition of U-turns and enhance driver awareness. Explanation. Installing additional signage to reinforce the prohibition of U-turns is the most effective response. Clear and visible signage can help remind drivers of the regulations and reduce the number of violations. Increasing the number of tickets issued date may not address the underlying issue if drivers are unaware of the prohibition. Additional patrols, C, may help catch offenders but does not prevent future violations. Conducting a survey, D, might provide insights but is not as immediately effective as improving signage and enforcement. Question 25. A traffic enforcement agent is investigating a case where a vehicle was speeding in a school zone during off hours with the area clearly marked with school zone signs. What is the most appropriate action for the agent to take a issue a citation for speeding as the school zone signs are still in effect regardless of school hours? 
B, ignore the speeding violations since the infraction occurred outside of school hours when no children are present. C, verify with local authorities whether the school zone restrictions apply outside of school hours before deciding on the citation. D, recommend to the driver to avoid speeding in school zones at all times, even if it is outside of school hours. Correct answer, A issue a citation for speeding as the school zone signs is still in effect regardless of school hours. Explanation, school zone signs typically remain in effect at all times to ensure safety in areas where children are present during school hours and to reinforce the speed limits around schools. The agent should issue a citation for speeding even if the violation occurred outside of school hours as the signage and regulations are enforced consistently to maintain safety. Ignoring the violation, B does not align with standard enforcement practices. Verifying with local authorities, C may be unnecessary if the signage indicates that the rules are in effect. Recommending general advice, D does not address the specific infraction. Question 26. An enforcement agent is preparing a report on traffic incidents in a high accident area. Which data should the agent prioritize to identify key factors contributing to the high accident rate? A. The total number of traffic violations recorded in the area. B. The types of vehicles involved in accidents and their conditions. C. The times and weather conditions during which most accidents occur. D. The demographics of drivers involved in accidents. Correct answer. C. The times and weather conditions during which most accidents occur. Explanation. Prioritizing data on the times and weather conditions during which most accidents occur is crucial for identifying key factors contributing to high accident rates. This information helps in understanding patterns and environmental factors that influence accident frequency and severity, allowing for targeted interventions. While the total number of traffic violations A and types of vehicles B are relevant, they do not directly address when and under what conditions accidents happen. Driver demographics D may offer additional insights but are secondary to understanding temporal and environmental patterns. Question 27. An enforcement agent observes a vehicle with an expired registration sticker. The driver states that they have recently renewed their registration but have not yet received the updated sticker. What should the agent's response be a issue? A citation for expired registration but advise the driver to provide proof of renewal to contest the citation. B. Accept the driver's explanation and allow them to continue without issuing a citation. C. Verify the renewal status with the registration authority before deciding on the citation. D. Provide the driver with a warning and suggest they obtain and display the updated registration sticker as soon as possible. Correct answer, A issue a citation for expired registration but advise the driver to provide proof of renewal to contest the citation explanation. The appropriate response is to issue a citation for expired registration as the registration sticker is expired according to the visible evidence. However, advising the driver to provide proof of renewal allows them to contest the citation if they have valid documentation proving the renewal. Accepting the driver's explanation without action B does not address the expired registration. Verifying the renewal status with the registration authority C may not be necessary if the documentation is not immediately available. Providing a warning D is not sufficient when a citation is warranted based on visible violations. Question 28. A traffic enforcement agent is tasked with improving compliance with a new local traffic ordinance that restricts truck parking on residential streets. What is the most effective approach to enforce this new ordinance? A. Increase the number of patrols specifically to issue citations for truck parking violations. B. Place temporary signage to alert truck drivers of the new ordinance and its restrictions. C. Conduct community meetings to inform residents about the new ordinance and its enforcement. D. Implement. A public education campaign highlighting the reasons for the new ordinance and encouraging voluntary compliance. Correct answer. B. Place temporary signage to alert truck drivers of the new ordinance and its restrictions. Explanation. Placing temporary signage is the most effective approach to enforce a new traffic ordinance because it directly informs truck drivers of the new restrictions, helping to ensure they are aware of the changes and comply accordingly. Increased patrols a, may be necessary but will be more effective once drivers are aware of the new rules. 
community meetings c and public education campaigns d are useful for broader outreach but may not be as immediate in achieving compliance compared to direct signage question 29 an enforcement agent is analyzing data on traffic violations in a high traffic area and notices a spike in speeding violations during certain times of the day what should be the primary focus of the agent's follow-up actions? A. Increase the frequency of speed enforcement during the identified peak times to address the surge in violations. B. Conduct an analysis of traffic flow and vehicle counts to determine if the timing of the violations corresponds with traffic congestion. C. Recommend changes to traffic signal timing to reduce the frequency of speeding violations. D. Implement a public awareness campaign about the risks of speeding and the new enforcement measures. Correct answer A. Increase the frequency of speed enforcement during the identified peak times to address the surge in violations. Explanation Increasing the frequency of speed enforcement during the identified peak times directly addresses the surge in speeding violations by targeting the periods when violations are most prevalent. This targeted approach helps reduce violations effectively. Analyzing traffic flow B and recommending changes to signal timing C could be beneficial but may not address the immediate issue of speeding violations. A public awareness campaign D is helpful for general education but does not directly impact the enforcement of speeding violations. Question 30. An enforcement agent is working with a new automated license plate recognition output system to identify stolen vehicles. What is a crucial step the agent must take to ensure the system's effectiveness? A. Regularly update the ALPR system's database with the latest information on stolen vehicles. B. Increase the number of physical inspections of vehicles to complement the ALPR system. C. Provide training to all enforcement agents on how to manually check vehicle registrations. D. Collaborate with local media to publicize the use of the ALPR system to deter vehicle theft. Correct answer A. Regularly update the ALPR systems database with the latest information on stolen vehicles. Explanation Regularly updating the ALPR systems database with the latest information on stolen vehicles is crucial for ensuring the system's effectiveness. This ensures that the system can accurately identify stolen vehicles based on current data. Increasing physical inspections, B, and providing manual registration checks, C, may be helpful but are supplementary to having an up-to-date database. Publicizing the use of the AL PR system, D, might deter theft but does not impact the system's operational effectiveness directly. Question 31. An enforcement agent is dealing with a situation where a vehicle is parked in a space reserved for emergency vehicles. The driver argues that the space was empty when they parked and that they will move the vehicle immediately. What is the most appropriate action for the agent? A. Issue a citation for parking in an emergency vehicle space and advise the driver to move the vehicle. B. Allow the driver to move the vehicle without issuing a citation since they have agreed to relocate it immediately. C. Request proof from the driver that they had no knowledge of the reserved parking space designation before deciding on a citation. D. Issue a warning instead of a citation, emphasizing the importance of keeping emergency vehicle spaces clear. Correct answer. A. Issue a citation for parking in an emergency vehicle space and advise the driver to move the vehicle. Explanation. The most appropriate action is to issue a citation for parking in an emergency vehicle space as it is a violation of parking regulations. A citation enforces the rule and helps maintain availability for emergency vehicles. Advising the driver to move the vehicle A. Ensures compliance while enforcing the law. Allowing the driver to move the vehicle without. A citation. B. Does not address the violation. Requesting proof of ignorance. C. Is unnecessary since signage should clearly indicate reserved spaces. Issuing a warning. D. Might not be sufficient given the critical nature of emergency vehicle spaces. Question 32. An enforcement agent is reviewing a report of a recurring issue with vehicles blocking a crosswalk near a busy intersection. What should the agent prioritize in addressing this problem? A. Increase the frequency of patrols to ticket vehicles blocking the crosswalk. 
B collaborate with city planners to improve the design of the intersection and crosswalk. C install additional signage to alert drivers not to block the crosswalk. D conduct an educational campaign targeting drivers about the importance of keeping crosswalks clear. Correct answer. B collaborate with city planners to improve the design of the intersection and crosswalk. Explanation. Collaborating with city planners to improve the design of the intersection and crosswalk addresses the root causes of the problem by potentially reducing the space constraints or improving the flow of traffic around the crosswalk, while increasing patrols A and installing signage C are important, they may not resolve underlying design issues. Conducting an educational campaign D is valuable for raising awareness but does not directly address potential design flaws that could contribute to vehicles blocking the crosswalk. Question 33. During a traffic stop, an enforcement agent finds that the driver has a suspended license but insists they were unaware of the suspension. What is the best course of action for the agent to take a issue a citation for driving with a suspended license and inform the driver of the suspension? B. Verify the suspension status with the licensing authority before issuing any citation. C. Allow the driver to continue driving and advise them to resolve the suspension issue with the licensing authority. D. Issue a warning and recommend the driver to check their license status with the authority. Correct answer A. Issue a citation for driving with a suspended license and inform the driver of the suspension. Explanation The best course of action is to issue a citation for driving with a suspended license as driving with a suspended license is a violation regardless of the driver's awareness. Informing the driver of the suspension is necessary so they are aware of the legal status of their license. Verifying the suspension status B. May be unnecessary if the suspension is already confirmed allowing the driver to continue driving, C and issuing, a warning, D are inappropriate responses as they do not enforce the law or address the violation. Question 34. An enforcement agent notices that many vehicles are failing to yield at a specific intersection where a yield sign is present. To address this issue effectively, what should be the primary focus of the agent's intervention? A. Increase the frequency of traffic stops and citations for failure to yield at the intersection. B. Request the installation of a traffic light to replace the yield sign to improve compliance. C. Conduct a traffic study to understand why drivers are not yielding and address the identified issues. D. Implement a public awareness campaign to educate drivers on the importance of yielding at intersections. Correct answer. C. Conduct a traffic study to understand why drivers are not yielding and address the identified issues. Explanation. Conducting a traffic study is the most effective way to understand the underlying reasons why drivers are failing to yield at the intersection. This approach helps identify potential issues with the signs visibility, traffic flow or other factors contributing to non-compliance. Increasing traffic stops they may not address the root cause of the problem. Requesting a traffic light B might be a solution but requires careful consideration of the traffic studies findings. A public awareness campaign D is beneficial but may not be as effective without understanding and addressing the specific issues causing non-compliance. Question 35. An enforcement agent is tasked with enforcing a new parking regulation that restricts parking in certain residential areas during specific hours. What is the best approach to ensure the new regulation is effectively communicated and enforced? A. Issue parking citations immediately for violations of the new regulation. B. Distribute informational flyers to residents and drivers about the new parking regulation before enforcing it. C. Increase patrols in the area to monitor for violations and issue warnings before starting citation enforcement. D. Collaborate with local media to announce the new regulation and its enforcement timeline. Correct answer. B. Distribute informational flyers to residents and drivers about the new parking regulation before enforcing it. Explanation. Distributing informational flyers is the best approach to ensure that the new parking regulation is effectively communicated to residents and drivers. This proactive measure helps inform the public about the new rules, reducing the likelihood of inadvertent violations, issuing citations immediately, a, without prior notification may result in complaints and misunderstandings. 
Increasing patrols, see, and issuing warnings are useful but may not be as effective in ensuring widespread awareness. Collaborating with local media D can help but informational flyers provide direct and clear communication to those affected. Question 36. During an inspection, an enforcement agent finds a vehicle with an expired inspection sticker but is informed by the owner that they have an appointment to renew the inspection the following day. How should the agent proceed a issue? A citation for the expired inspection sticker but note the owner's appointment for renewal in the report. B. Allow the owner to continue without a citation as they have an upcoming appointment to renew the inspection. C. Verify the appointment with the inspection facility before deciding whether to issue a citation. D. Provide the owner with a warning and advise them to ensure the inspection is renewed as soon as possible. Correct answer A. Issue a citation for the expired inspection sticker but note the owner's appointment for renewal in the report. Explanation Issuing a citation for the expired inspection sticker is necessary as the violation is based on the current status of the vehicle. Noting the owner's appointment for renewal in the report is important for record keeping and may be considered if the owner contests the citation. Allowing the owner to continue without a citation B. Does not address the expired status of the sticker verifying the appointment. C is not typically required as the expired sticker itself constitutes a violation. Providing a warning D might not be appropriate for an expired inspection sticker, which is a clear violation of regulations. Question 37. An enforcement agent observes a vehicle parked in a spot designated for disabled parking. The vehicle does not have a valid disabled parking permit, but the driver insists they are only temporarily parked there. What is the most appropriate action for the agent to take a issue? A citation for unauthorized use of a disabled parking spot and explain the violation to the driver. B. Allow the vehicle to remain parked temporarily and advise the driver to obtain a valid permit for future use. C. Ask the driver to move the vehicle immediately without issuing a citation as the vehicle is only temporarily parked. D. Request verification from the driver's physician regarding their need for a disabled parking permit before deciding on the citation. Correct answer. A. Issue a citation for unauthorized use of a disabled parking spot and explain the violation to the driver. Explanation. Issuing a citation for unauthorized use of a disabled parking spot is the correct action as parking in such spaces without a valid permit is a violation of parking regulations. The citation enforces the law and addresses the misuse of the disabled parking space, allowing temporary parking B or requesting verification from a physician D are not appropriate actions as they do not resolve the immediate violation. Asking the driver to move the vehicle C without issuing a citation does not address the violation and may not be effective in preventing future infractions. Question 38. An enforcement agent is analysing traffic violation reports and finds a significant number of violations related to running red lights at a particular intersection. What should the agent prioritise to improve compliance and safety at this intersection? A. Increase the number of traffic stops and citations for running red lights at the intersection. B. Work with city planners to consider installing a red light camera to monitor and deter violations. C. Conduct a survey of drivers to understand their reasons for running red lights at the intersection. D. Launch a public education campaign about the dangers of running red lights and the consequences of such actions. Correct answer. B. Work with city planners to consider installing a red light camera to monitor and deter violations. Explanation. Working with city planners to consider installing a red light camera is the most effective approach to improve compliance and safety at the intersection. Red light cameras can provide continuous monitoring, deter violations and capture evidence for enforcement while increasing traffic stops A. And conducting surveys C. May provide short-term improvements or insights. The installation of a red light camera addresses the issue systematically and continuously. A public education campaign D can complement these efforts but is less immediate in its impact on reducing violations. Question 39. An enforcement agent notices a pattern of frequent parking violations at a newly designated no parking zone. What should the agent's primary focus be to address this issue effectively? A. Increase ticketing and enforcement in the no parking zone to discourage violations. B. Review the visibility and clarity of the no parking signs and adjust as needed to ensure they are easily seen and understood. 
C. Initiate a public consultation to gather feedback on the no parking zone and its impact on local residents. D. Set up a temporary surveillance system to monitor the area and document the frequency of violations. Correct answer. B. Review the visibility and clarity of the no parking signs and adjust as needed to ensure they are easily seen and understood. Explanation. Reviewing and improving the visibility and clarity of no parking signs is crucial for ensuring that drivers are aware of and understand the new regulations. Effective signage can significantly reduce violations by providing clear instructions to drivers. While increasing ticketing aid may help in the short term, it does not address the root cause if signage is unclear. Public consultation C and setting up temporary surveillance D may provide additional insights or evidence but do not directly resolve issues with signed visibility. Question 40. An enforcement agent is tasked with addressing a problem where drivers frequently speed through a school zone. What is the most effective strategy to improve compliance with speed limits in this area? A. Increase the frequency of speed enforcement operations in the school zone. B. Collaborate with local schools to implement a community-based campaign promoting safe driving near schools. C. Install speed bumps and additional traffic signs to physically slow down vehicles in the school zone. D. Conduct a detailed analysis of traffic patterns and driver behaviour in the school zone to identify specific issues. Correct answer. C. Install speed bumps and additional traffic signs to physically slow down vehicles in the school zone. Explanation. Installing speed bumps and additional traffic signs is the most effective strategy to physically reduce vehicle speeds in a school zone, thereby improving safety for children. Speed bumps are a direct intervention that forces drivers to slow down. Increasing speed enforcement it can help but may not be as effective in the long term as physical measures. A community-based campaign, B, and detailed traffic analysis, D, are valuable but do not provide the immediate and tangible impact of physical speed control measures. Question 41. During a traffic stop, an enforcement agent finds that a driver has an expired vehicle registration but insists they are in the process of renewing it. How should the agent handle this situation? A. Issue a citation for the expired registration and provide information on how to address the issue. B. Allow the driver to continue without issuing a citation as they are in the process of renewing the registration. C. Verify the renewal status with the registration authority before deciding whether to issue a citation. D. Issue a warning and advise the driver to complete the renewal process as soon as possible. Correct answer, A. Issue a citation for the expired registration and provide information on how to address the issue. Explanation, issuing a citation for the expired registration is necessary as it is a clear violation of vehicle registration laws. Providing information on how to address the issue is helpful for the driver. Allowing the driver to continue, B, or issuing a warning, D, does not address the violation adequately. Verifying the renewal status with the authority, C, might not be necessary if the registration is clearly expired. Question 42. An enforcement agent is reviewing a report where multiple drivers are cited for illegal U-turns at a busy intersection. What should be the focus of the agent to address this issue effectively? A. Increase the number of citations issued for illegal U-turns at the intersection. B. Evaluate the intersection's design to determine if modifications could prevent illegal U-turns. C. Implement an educational campaign specifically targeting U-turn violations at the intersection. D. Set up additional surveillance to monitor U-turn violations and collect data on their frequency. Correct answer. B. Evaluate the intersection's design to determine if modifications could prevent illegal U-turns. Explanation. Evaluating the intersection's design is crucial in addressing the root cause of illegal U-turns. If the intersection layout encourages or does not adequately prevent illegal U-turns, design modifications may be needed. Increasing citations A may not solve the underlying issue and an educational campaign C might not be as effective if the design itself is problematic. Setting up additional surveillance, D is useful for data collection but does not address the potential design flaws contributing to the violations. Question 43. 
an enforcement agent is reviewing patterns of repeated traffic violations at a particular highway interchange. The violations include speeding and running red lights. What is the most effective approach to address these issues comprehensively? A. Increase the number of patrols and enforcement operations at the interchange to deter violations. B. Work with traffic engineers to redesign the interchange to improve traffic flow and safety. C. Conduct a public awareness campaign about the consequences of speeding and running red lights. D. Analyze traffic accident reports and violation data to identify underlying causes and potential solutions. Correct answer. D. Analyze traffic accident reports and violation data to identify underlying causes and potential solutions. Explanation. Analyzing traffic accident reports and violation data helps identify the root causes of traffic issues at the interchange. This data-driven approach allows for targeted interventions, whether they involve redesigning the interchange, b increasing enforcement, a or launching public awareness campaigns, c understanding the specific problems through detailed analysis ensures that solutions address the actual causes of violations rather than applying general measures. Question 44. An enforcement agent encounters a vehicle with tinted windows that appear darker than the legal limit specified by local regulations. What should the agent do to handle this situation properly? A issue a citation for illegal window tinting and inform the driver about the legal limits. B conduct a window tint test using a tint meter to determine if the tint complies with legal standards before issuing a citation. C allow the driver to proceed with a warning advising them to check and comply with tinting regulations. D refer the driver to a local inspection facility for an official determination of the window tint level. Correct answer. B. Conduct a window tint test using a tint meter to determine if the tint complies with legal standards before issuing a citation. Explanation. Conducting a window tint test using a tint meter provides a precise measurement to determine whether the tint complies with legal standards. This ensures that citations are issued based on accurate information. Issuing a citation without proper measurement a, may lead to disputes. Allowing the driver to proceed with a warning, C does not enforce the regulation effectively. Referring the driver to an inspection facility, D is not typically necessary if the agent is equipped to perform the measurement. Question 45. An enforcement agent is investigating a series of complaints about frequent speeding in a residential neighborhood. What should be the agent's primary focus to address the issue effectively? A. Increase the number of speed enforcement operations in the neighborhood. B. Consult with residents to gather more information about the speeding problem and their concerns. C. Evaluate the existing speed limits and traffic signs to determine if they are appropriate for the neighborhood. D. Collaborate with local government officials to consider implementing traffic calming measures such as speed bumps or additional signage. Correct answer. D. Collaborate with local government officials to consider implementing traffic calming measures such as speed bumps or additional signage. Explanation. Collaborating with local government officials to implement traffic calming measures addresses the issue of speeding more effectively by physically modifying the environment to reduce speeds. Measures like speed bumps or additional signage can significantly impact driver behavior. Increasing speed enforcement a, may not be as effective if the underlying road conditions encourage speeding. Consulting with residents, B, and evaluating speed limits, C, are useful for understanding the problem but may not provide immediate solutions like traffic calming measures. Question 46. An enforcement agent is responding to a high number of complaints about illegal parking in front of a fire hydrant. To address this issue effectively, what should be the agent's primary focus? A. Increase the issuance of parking citations for violations near fire hydrants. B. Ensure that fire hydrant zones are clearly marked with visible signs and curb paint. C. Contact local fire departments to discuss alternative solutions to manage parking near fire hydrants. D. Implement a community outreach program to educate drivers on the importance of keeping fire hydrant areas clear. Correct answer. B. Ensure that fire hydrant zones are clearly marked with visible signs and curb paint. Explanation. Ensuring that fire hydrant zones are clearly marked with visible signs and curb paint is crucial for preventing illegal parking. Proper marking helps drivers easily identify restricted areas. 
reducing the likelihood of violations. While increasing citations, they may address the problem temporarily, it does not resolve the issue of unclear markings. Contacting local fire departments, C, and implementing outreach programs, D, are valuable but may not be as immediately effective as improving signage and marking. Question 47. During a routine traffic stop, an enforcement agent finds that a driver's license is suspended due to multiple unpaid fines. What should the agent's next step be in handling this situation? A. Issue a citation for driving with a suspended license and advise the driver to resolve their outstanding fines. B. Allow the driver to continue but inform them about the importance of resolving their suspended license status. C. Contact the relevant authority to confirm the suspension details before issuing a citation. D. Escort the driver to the nearest payment centre to resolve their outstanding fines. Correct answer, A. Issue a citation for driving with a suspended license and advise the driver to resolve their outstanding fines. Explanation. Issuing a citation for driving with a suspended license is the correct procedure as driving with a suspended license is a legal violation. Advising the driver to resolve their outstanding fines provides them with information on how to rectify their situation. Allowing the driver to continue, B. Does not address the violation. Contacting the relevant authority, C, may be necessary for verification, but issuing the citation is a priority. Escorting the driver to a payment centre, D, is not typically within the enforcement agent's responsibilities. Question 48. An enforcement agent is investigating a pattern of frequent accidents at a particular intersection. What should be the agent's primary focus to improve safety at this location? A. Increase enforcement of traffic laws at the intersection to deter unsafe driving behaviours. B. Request the installation of a traffic light or additional signage to improve safety. C. Collect data on accident types and contributing factors to identify specific issues at the intersection. D. Launch a public awareness campaign about safe driving practices at the intersection. Correct answer. C. Collect data on accident types and contributing factors to identify specific issues at the intersection. Explanation. Collecting data on accident types and contributing factors is essential for identifying the root causes of frequent accidents. This data-driven approach helps in developing targeted solutions such as requesting traffic light installation B or increasing enforcement A. While a public awareness campaign D is beneficial, it is more effective when combined with insights from data analysis. Addressing the specific issues identified through data collection ensures that interventions are based on accurate information. Question 49. An enforcement agent is called to a scene where multiple vehicles are observed driving in a lane that is marked as a bus-only lane during peak hours. What is the most effective initial action the agent should take? A. Issue citations to all vehicles in the bus-only lane and immediately clear the lane. B. Set up a temporary checkpoint to redirect vehicles from the bus-only lane and explain the restriction to drivers. C. Contact public transportation authorities to request an increase in bus service during peak hours. D. Deploy traffic cones to block the bus-only lane and prevent further violations. Correct answer. B. Set up a temporary checkpoint to redirect vehicles from the bus-only lane and explain the restriction to drivers. Explanation. Setting up a temporary checkpoint is the most effective initial action as it allows the agent to redirect vehicles from the bus-only lane and educate drivers about the restriction. This approach helps to manage the situation in real time and ensures that drivers understand and comply with the regulation. Issuing citations A without addressing the root of the problem may not resolve the issue. Contacting public transportation authorities C and deploying traffic cones D are not immediate solutions to the violation and may not address the compliance issue effectively. Question 50. An enforcement agent notices that a specific intersection has frequent complaints about inadequate visibility due to overgrown vegetation. What is the best course of action for the agent? A. File a report with the City Maintenance Department to address the overgrown vegetation. B. Increase traffic enforcement at the intersection to compensate for the visibility issue. C. Educate local residents about the importance of maintaining clear visibility at intersections. 
de-temporarily remove the overgrown vegetation and set up additional traffic control measures. Correct answer, A5 a report with the city maintenance department to address the overgrown vegetation explanation. Filing a report with the city maintenance department is the best course of action to ensure that the overgrown vegetation is addressed by the appropriate authorities. This action helps to restore proper visibility at the intersection, which is crucial for safety. Increasing traffic enforcement, B, and educating local residents, C, may not effectively resolve the visibility issue. Temporarily removing vegetation, D, is not a long-term solution and may not be within the agent's authority or capability. Question 51. An enforcement agent is assigned to a district where there is a recurring problem of truck drivers ignoring weight limits on a bridge. What should be the agent's primary focus to address this issue effectively? A. Conduct random weight inspections for trucks using the bridge to ensure compliance with weight limits. B. Increase the frequency of visible patrols around the bridge to deter trucks from exceeding weight limits. C. Collaborate with bridge engineers to assess whether the current weight limits are appropriate for the bridge's capacity. D. Place additional weight limit signage and warnings on the approach to the bridge. Correct answer A. Conduct random weight inspections for trucks using the bridge to ensure compliance with weight limits. Explanation Conducting random weight inspections is the most effective way to ensure that trucks comply with the weight limits and address the problem of trucks ignoring these limits. This approach directly targets the issue of non compliance, increasing patrols, B, and placing additional signage. D. May help but do not provide a direct measure of compliance. Collaborating with bridge engineers, C, is useful for assessing the appropriateness of weight limits but does not address the immediate enforcement of existing regulations. Question 52. An enforcement agent observes a driver who appears to be distracted while using a mobile phone, but the driver insists they were using a hands-free device. What should the agent do to handle this situation properly? A. Issue a citation for distracted driving based on the observation and ask the driver to provide proof of hands-free device usage. B. Verify the type of mobile phone device and its usage to confirm whether it complies with hands-free regulations before issuing a citation. C. Allow the driver to continue without issuing a citation and advise them to ensure compliance with hands-free device laws. D. Request the driver's phone records to confirm whether the device was being used in compliance with hands-free regulations. Correct answer. B. Verify the type of mobile phone device and its usage to confirm whether it complies with hands-free regulations before issuing a citation. Explanation. Verifying the type of mobile phone device and its usage ensures that the citation is issued based on accurate information. If the driver is using a hands-free device, it would be important to confirm this before taking any enforcement action. Issuing a citation based solely on observation A without verifying compliance could be unjust. Allowing the driver to continue C or requesting phone records, D might not be practical or necessary for confirming compliance. Question 53. An enforcement agent is investigating a pattern of illegal parking in a residential area where there are no clear markings or signs indicating parking restrictions. What should be the agent's initial step to address the issue? A. Begin issuing parking citations to vehicles in the area to discourage illegal parking. B. Request the installation of proper parking signage and markings to clearly define parking restrictions. C. Hold a community meeting to discuss parking issues with local residents and gather their input on potential solutions. D. Increase patrols in the area to monitor parking behaviour and identify common violations. Correct answer. B. Request the installation of proper parking signage and markings to clearly define parking restrictions. Explanation. Requesting the installation of proper signage and markings addresses the fundamental issue of unclear parking restrictions, which is likely contributing to the problem. Clear markings and signs provide drivers with the necessary information to comply with parking regulations. Issuing citations A without proper signage might be unfair and ineffective. Holding a community meeting C and increasing patrols D are useful but do not directly resolve the issue of unclear restrictions.
Question 54. An enforcement agent is assigned to handle a situation where a major road is frequently obstructed by construction equipment causing traffic delays and hazards. What should be the agent's primary focus in managing this issue? A. Issue citations to the construction company for obstructing the road and causing traffic issues. B. Coordinate with the construction company to ensure that equipment is removed promptly and that proper traffic management measures are in place. C. Increase traffic control measures in the affected area, such as setting up temporary traffic lights and cones. D. Notify the local government about the construction-related issues to seek a long-term resolution. Correct answer. Be coordinate with the construction company to ensure that equipment is removed promptly and that proper traffic management measures are in place. Explanation. Coordinating with the construction company is the most effective way to address immediate road obstructions and ensure that proper traffic management measures are implemented. This helps to minimise traffic delays and hazards. Issuing citations they may not immediately resolve the obstruction problem. Increasing traffic control measures C can help in the short term but may not address the root cause. Notifying the local government D is important for long-term resolution but does not address the immediate issue of road obstruction. Question 55. An enforcement agent is patrolling a highway and notices several vehicles exceeding the speed limit in a zone where the speed limit has recently changed. What should be the agent's primary action to address this situation? A. Issue speeding tickets to all vehicles exceeding the new speed limit to enforce the change immediately. B. Set up a temporary speed monitoring checkpoint to educate drivers about the new speed limit and issue warnings instead of citations. C. Contact local media to announce the new speed limit and inform the public about the recent change. D. Increase the frequency of patrols in the area to monitor compliance with the new speed limit over time. Correct answer. B. Set up a temporary speed monitoring checkpoint to educate drivers about the new speed limit and issue warnings instead of citations. Explanation. Setting up a temporary speed monitoring checkpoint allows the agent to educate drivers about the recent speed limit change and provide warnings helping to ensure compliance with the new regulations. This approach is effective in transitioning drivers to the new speed limit without immediate punitive action. Issuing tickets A might be premature if drivers are not yet aware of the change. Contacting local media C and increasing patrols D are useful for broader awareness but do not provide immediate on-site education and enforcement. Question 56. An enforcement agent is involved in a case where a driver claims their vehicle was parked legally but the vehicle is obstructing a crosswalk. What should the agent do to handle the situation effectively? A. Issue a citation for obstructing the crosswalk and request the driver to move the vehicle immediately. B. Ask the driver to move the vehicle and issue a warning for the violation rather than a citation. C. Conduct an inspection to determine if the crosswalk is marked properly and if the vehicle is in violation of the regulations. D. Take photographs of the vehicle and the crosswalk for evidence and file a report with the relevant authorities. Correct answer, A issue a citation for obstructing the crosswalk and request the driver to move the vehicle immediately. Explanation, issuing a citation for obstructing the crosswalk addresses the immediate violation and ensures that the vehicle is moved promptly. This action enforces the regulation and prevents further obstruction of pedestrian access. Asking the driver to move the vehicle and issuing a warning B might not be sufficient to address the violation if it continues. Inspecting the crosswalk markings C and taking photographs D are useful for documentation but do not immediately resolve the obstruction. Question 57. An enforcement agent is analysing traffic patterns in a city with frequent accidents at certain intersections. What is the most effective method for the agent to improve safety at these locations? A. Conduct a thorough analysis of traffic accident reports and patterns to identify high-risk factors and propose targeted interventions. B. Increase the number of traffic enforcement operations at the intersections to deter risky driving behaviour. C. Implement immediate traffic control measures, such as setting up temporary barriers or adjusting traffic signals. D. Collaborate with local businesses and residents to promote safer driving practices and community-based solutions. 
Correct answer, A. Conduct a thorough analysis of traffic accident reports and patterns to identify high-risk factors and propose targeted interventions. Explanation. Conducting a thorough analysis of traffic accident reports and patterns allows the agent to identify specific high-risk factors and propose targeted interventions based on data. This data-driven approach ensures that safety measures are effective and address the root causes of accidents. Increasing enforcement b. And implementing traffic control measures c. A reactive solutions that might not address underlying issues. Collaborating with the community d. Can complement data-driven solutions but is not as immediately effective in identifying specific problem areas. Question 50. An enforcement agent observes a vehicle parked in a spot reserved for disabled persons without the appropriate permit. The vehicle's driver claims they have a temporary permit that is not visible. What should the agent do next? They issue a citation for illegal parking and inform the driver that they must provide proof of their permit in court. B. Allow the driver to move their vehicle and request that they display the temporary permit properly in the future. C. Check the vehicle for any documentation or permits and issue a citation if no valid permit is found. D. Contact the relevant authorities to verify the validity of the temporary permit before taking any action. Correct answer. C. Check the vehicle for any documentation or permits and issue a citation if no valid permit is found. Explanation. Checking the vehicle for any documentation or permits is essential to verify the validity of the temporary permit. If no valid permit is found, issuing a citation for illegal parking is appropriate. Allowing the driver to move the vehicle B without verifying the permit might result in enforcement issues. Contacting authorities D may delay the process and issuing a citation without checking documentation A might be unjust if the permit is valid. Question 59. An enforcement agent is investigating a complaint about excessive speeding in a residential neighborhood with no posted speed limit. What is the best approach for the agent to address the issue? A. Post temporary speed limit signs to manage speeding and inform drivers of the new regulations. B. Use speed monitoring equipment to collect data on vehicle speeds and identify trends before taking action. C. Increase enforcement patrols in the area to deter speeding and issue citations to speeding drivers. D. Conduct. A community survey to gather input on appropriate speed limits and address the issue based on resident feedback. Correct answer. B. Use speed monitoring equipment to collect data on vehicle speeds and identify trends before taking action. Explanation. Using speed monitoring equipment allows the agent to collect data on vehicle speeds and identify trends, which is crucial for understanding the extent of the speeding problem and determining appropriate measures. Posting temporary speed limit signs A may help but does not address the need for data-driven decision-making. Increasing patrols C can be effective but may not provide a complete picture of the speeding issue. Conducting a community survey D is useful for gathering feedback but should be complemented by data analysis for effective enforcement. Question 60. An enforcement agent is tasked with managing traffic around a school during drop-off and pick-up times. What should be the primary focus to ensure safety and smooth traffic flow? A. Implement strict enforcement of traffic laws in the school zone to deter violations during drop-off and pick-up times. B. Coordinate with school staff to create a traffic management plan that includes designated drop-off and pick-up zones. C. Increase the number of traffic control officers present during drop-off and pick-up times to manage the flow of vehicles. D. Distribute flyers to parents and guardians about safe driving practices around the school to raise awareness. Correct answer. B. Coordinate with school staff to create a traffic management plan that includes designated drop-off and pick-up zones. Explanation. Coordinating with school staff to create a traffic management plan is the most effective approach to ensure safety and smooth traffic flow. A well-designed plan with designated drop-off and pick-up zones helps organise traffic and minimise congestion. Strict enforcement A and increasing traffic control officers C are important but should be part of a broader plan. Distributing flyers D is beneficial for raising awareness but does not address immediate traffic management needs.